Greetings, Kufnats. Christine Elise, and we are super excited to present you Harp and Soul. Originally, when we were putting this project together, we were really hype about like how fresh and innovative it is. And like, because we hadn't seen or heard anything like it, we thought we were bringing something really new to the table. Um, and though it is bringing something new to the table for this time, it's something that goes way back. Yeah, and once we really found that out, uh, we did some research on Greek literature to see the similarities and differences and the roots of where this all came from. Um, so today we're going to go into a little bit of that history to share with you. Um, yeah, and I think it'll be cool to like uh, show the relationship of that, what we're doing, um, you know, which has hip hop uh, as the foundation and the meeting of uh, folk music and how they all, you know, intersect and, and have a, uh, a marriage of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, going into kind of how we started our community outreach project, blending these genres together, um, followed by a performance that mm -hmm. really connects that time. We wanted to kind of recreate the style of that time, the accompaniment, to show you more of the connection that we discovered, um, followed by some thoughts for discussion. Hope you enjoy. So we're gonna start by going all the way back to the ancient Greek history. The first period, Dark Ages, was 1100 BC to 750 BC. And then, the period that we're really going to hone in and focus on is the Archaic Age, which happened 800 BC to 500 BC. And this is where this age of lyrical poetry came about and was established. Then it kind of continued to flow into the next period, which was the Classical Age. The Classical Age was 500 BC to 3 about 20, 23 BC. So the Dark Age and the Classical Age sandwiched this era that we're talking about called the Archaic Age. So this is where the age of lyric poetry was born. Uh, lyric poetry. Um, when I first heard that, I was like, wait, lyric poetry? That's basically saying the same thing, like poetry, poetry. Um, and so I was like, what is, like, I was kind of confused about why it was worded that way, but then I found out that lyric, uh, in lyric poetry, actually comes from the word lyre, which is another word for the harp, uh, it was like the original harp. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so lyric is basically another word for a lyre, mm -hmm. and so yeah, so it made perfect sense once I did the knowledge and understood what it was about. So what happened in Greek history during this time um, as why lyric poetry came about? Uh, we wanted to see sometimes our music and creative arts is really reflective of the period of the time. That's where I know when we write songs, we often are in a specific place yeah. or driving somewhere and there's some influence. Do for you sure. agree? Yeah, for sure. Um, I feel like pretty much all of our songs are based off of experience or what's going on around us, like what, what, what we're experiencing in that moment mm -hmm. uh, heavily influences what we write, for sure. So when we took a look at the, um, what was going on during that time in Greece, um, it was stated that the landscape of Greece had a lot of inlets and mountains and islands, and the geography was really broken up so there wasn't one government governing all of these areas of Greece. Mm -hmm. There was just these little pockets, right? And the pockets had their own city-states, and they called them polis. And each city-state, each polis, had their own history, their own government, their own culture, their own traditions, 
and therefore, most likely, their own art, and music, and dance, and ceremony. So at that time, if, say, you were from Athens, you would say, I'm Athenian. You wouldn't say, I'm Greek, right? That didn't come till a lot later. The unified Greek state did not exist back then as it does now. So, like, even though there were, like, small similarities between all these different city-states, it was really hard for them to connect yeah. because the transportation, there was no way to get out and, you know, build and connect with other people. So at some point that changed because there was an increase in trade, mm -hmm. uh, there was an increase in money, mm -hmm. and there was also an increase in population. So with all these things, they needed a way to track and mm -hmm. trace all this. So this was the start of the Greek alphabet because that was going to be a way for all of this to come together. Yeah, so yeah. literacy was just booming. It just kind of took off to right. uh, track everything. There was a shift and governments were formed. Yeah, so the, one of those governments was actually democracy. Um, before this time, it was monarchy, tyranny, where just one person would be a king of right. this whole area. But however, since now they're having all these little cities mm -hmm. and they're starting to communicate, there was this shift in really looking out for each other and having the community speak up for awareness of what's going on in their little city. If we're trading and we're giving money, well, we all should be a part of this process. So in Athens during this time, this was the first place where democracy was um, established. So now that we've like given a little history and understanding of, of what was going on uh, with forming these governments and people wanting to be involved in a community now and building, uh, we're going to shift back to what was artistically going on at that time. Think about this period of time as having a big influence on artistic development. Mm -hmm. And this is when lyric poetry also evolved. Um, poetry prior to this time was long and dynamic and had this sense of tragedy mm -hmm. and uh, talking about heroes and it was very myth mythological, mm -hmm. talking about gods and goddesses. Um, storytelling in this fantasy sense um, involving heroes. But since there was a shift in the community mm -hmm. and people were really starting to connect with each other, there was this interest in shorter, more um, realistic poems hmm. that still had this fantasy but it was more relatable right. and it was really in the present um, which caused for just a shift and this was the modern poetry of the time. It, it, it felt like um, people wanted something more real mm. like something that they could feel and relate to mm -hmm. so so the topics were very write what was going on around them, whether it be, you know, political, social justice mm -hmm. things, uh, what's going on within the community. Um, they were really writing and pulling from, from pain, mm -hmm. joy, experiences they were having, and, and kind of being a mouthpiece of that area, mm -hmm. wherever they were, and, and people related to it. And I, I was, you know, particularly drawn to that part of it because I mean that is exactly what hip hop is. Mm -hmm. You you you're you're a mouthpiece of your community. You speak out on injustices. Mm -hmm. uh, you also speak about joyful and partying mm -hmm. and having fun. Um, so yeah, I, I saw a direct connection of of where the 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 inspiration and you know what you pull from where that came from. When talking about the accompaniment and what music really supported this poetry and these um, stories and poems of current time, um, 
the lyre was used, which was a small U-shaped harp. And it's so cool to see that <laughs> this specific instrument was used to support um, these poems, which is something that we organically, you know, um, came together and created and, and didn't know that it really went beyond <laughs> time, you know? So um, the lyre was present in previous um, poetry before this archaic period, before the lyric poetry. However, it was often just mentioning somebody playing it. Um, there was some kind of stories about a tortoise shell being used as the first harp and um, the invention of the harp, um, but it never was really focused as a main accompaniment. Um, so now this instrument has been chosen to hmm. kind of best suit and fit um, the spoken word and poetry. And one interesting thing is that there was a specific way as to how this accompaniment happened. It had this rhythmic flow, but it took the place of a drum or a percussion instrument. Hmm. Um, so then it kind of created this shift in also the words. So not only are you having the motion of the word choice, mm -hmm. you're having the nonverbal emotion of what this repetitive sequence rhythmic platform creates. So after Koof and I had met and I had played and sat in a couple of shows, mm -hmm. um, there was an opportunity to play an acoustic um, kind of house show <laughs> in which we really hadn't created any music in a duo setting together yet. Yeah, the the performances and collaborations we did where, where you sat in always had uh, a track or different music behind it and you were just adding here and there. So this opportunity was really the first like harp and vocals. Mm -hmm. And that really wasn't planned no. <laughs> because we had tracks, mm -hmm. we had this idea and once we got there and before we were going to perform just the space didn't call for tracks right. that sure. would be um in you know big theaters we were in this <laughs> living room intimate storytelling space where Coop turned to me and said let's not use the tracks yeah, yeah. um <laughs> Yeah, because like you said, it felt like a living room. It was it was like what a basement studio yeah. uh, and had about sixty seats in there, uh -huh. and it was super intimate. And and to play these tracks would have would have been it just wouldn't have fit right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, yeah, that's just improv. It and and she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I think you had some some practice in improv anyway yeah so um so yeah so we just did it yeah and i mean my jaw definitely dropped because we were <laughs> like all prepared to do something else yeah and that's not what the community or that's not what the room at the time was calling for yeah. so it was an exact example of really like yeah you know shifting to what the needs were in the moment for sure so I also had to trust that, you know, he knew I could do it, you mm -hmm. know, and, and wouldn't sure. wouldn't, you know, put make me do anything that he didn't that I didn't think I could do. Mm -hmm. Um so that made me quickly think about, okay, well what are the fundamentals of these tracks? Right. And what is the fundamentals of the music that he creates, which is really based in nineties hip hop vibe. <laughs> <laughs> and it has this open but not so changing mm -hmm. rhythmic pattern mm -hmm. it's like all right so i'm gonna create these just like ostinato repeating pattern rhythms 
that are simple so that you know his lyrics and his magic can just glide on top of um, and I can create that bottom for the lyrics to really be heard. Mm -hmm. So what was that like? Um, you know, I had sat in, but right. it never was just strictly Strict, hard. Yeah. So what I think about is um, you said, so relating it to back then, you said that this instrument was taking the place of drum or percussion. Mm -hmm. And so with, with hip hop and emceeing, uh, a big part of what you rhyme over or perform over is the bass and the drum. Mm. And there's a repetitiveness of, you know, it's like four counts that just repeat, then repeat, then repeat. So when you played the harp, that's what you were essentially doing. You were playing parts that were very repetitive. Mm -hmm. So I had something I could bounce off and count. Mm -hmm. And so, so that was like the drum part mm -hmm. that, that, I was, that I was using the tempo and the beat to follow. But on top of that, you were playing notes that were, you know, super emotional mm. so it was like a mix of the two things in this one instrument and performing to the sounds of a harp um, evokes a certain emotion <laughs> or feeling so it was just like yeah it, it was mind-blowing the, the first time and like the crowd response mm -hmm. was was crazy and it just felt like uh it, it felt very natural mm -hmm. and yeah so my first experience with that was was beautiful <laughs> So after that experience, we realized, all right, this is something pretty cool mm -hmm. that in a way we stumbled upon mm -hmm. that didn't know was really embedded in roots of <laughs> just like right. For so sure. deep. For sure. um, so we began practicing and figuring out how to then expand from this. Yep. Um, and one of the ways that is also representing of that time was using simple messages that were really full of emotion and, and full of, you know, relatable content. But that also led to the choruses being super simple. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes the choruses that we create are, for example, be the light, see the light, breathe the light. This is kind of a mantra that there's not many words in there. Um, so when the listener gets to the chorus or that part, they can really take time to think about the main message. But during that short poem or what we call verse, mm -hmm. you're able to really digest what's happening. Yeah, it's, it's simple, but I like to say it's also very powerful because mm. you're, you're repeating this thing, like you said, a mantra. Mm -hmm. Be the light, see the light, breathe the light, 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 mm -hmm. light, light, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it, it's kind of like, and, and with the repetitiveness of the music too, it's kind of hypnotic mm. and like, you know, it gets uh, stuck in your head mm -hmm. and that's the whole purpose of, it, mm. of a course, so. So one of the last elements of this uh, music of the time was spontaneity. Hmm. Yeah, that's like, so these uh, poets were commissioned mm -hmm. to perform at certain events. And so they would create a piece that went with the event. Um, and I, I relate that to hip hop in, in freestyling mm -hmm. because this is a, uh, a skill that you have to come up with words to talk about and relate to what's going on right there. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, you, like if you're in a, at a basketball game 
and you're in the crowd and someone's like, yo, hit a freestyle about it. And then you have to go into like the point guards doing this, the center's doing that. There was a dunk. So it's like, it's very in the moment and right there. Well, I finally get my chance. I'm sitting down so you know I can't dance. I'm going to stand here looking at the screen, computerized. I'm going to tell y'all what this means. Yo, there's some talking in my background, but I'm going to keep laying it down like a lap down or a lap dance. No, I'm not into that. I'm into meditation and trance you gotta overstand when i come in the spot people overstand this is real hip-hop and and that's like uh again a direct correlation and connection to that and this and the evolution of it you know so you can just see what we found in exploring all this um all of these genres integrate into each other. They do. And uh, really like influence each other. A hundred percent. And it's like the the way that we're pulling all these connections from, from that and, and hip hop, hip hop also ties into folk music mm -hmm. the exact same way. It's it's all poetry put to to sound mm -hmm. and rhythm, so We'll go into that too, but yeah, it, there's just an intersection of everything right there. Mm -hmm. As I said earlier, I, I wanted to go into connecting hip hop with folk music mm -hmm. and the intersection and, and how I see, you know, personally how I think that it connects and, and there's, you know, something between the two very similar. Folk, folk music, uh, folk comes from the German Volk, which means people. Mm -hmm. So this is, is music of the people, music mm -hmm. for the people, you know? Born out of a need to speak out against whatever's going on. They're both heavily influenced by, whether it be political or socially, uh, whatever the people are experiencing, mm -hmm. that's where these songs are coming from. I didn't take any pictures, but I left my phone behind so they couldn't trace where I was. I was warned about the violence, but I was tired of being silent, so I headed downtown to the heartbeat of it all. And I saw veterans and mothers linking arms with one another, fathers with leaf blowers to push the smoke children on the sidewalk painting with colored chalk the rebellion of the ancestors growing through their veins yeah. ain't it beautiful when we smile it's a musical an act of revolution and the stage is a human one some people spend their lives wearing the costume when the script is sanskrit in the palms of our worship the same hands we go to work with, the same hands we go to work with. Put the real work in. Meditation and stillness, so your focus is the realest. Screaming from the outskirts when your voice is the clearest. Wishing for answers inside of elections, when justice was just born right inside your reflection. Here we stand, survivors of Holocaust, oceans of bodies bound and lost. Our dreams swam across, found the will to still live at all costs. The true mastery is self, honoring tears, loving the mirror beyond your greatest fears, a small army traveling beneath your skin, walking alone if you need to, the revolutions within. Our bodies birth suns, wrapped around Earth's axis, spinning the way people do when change is necessary action. Our ancestors saw us in the future, in perfect, perfect beams of light, a sacred prophecy of what's possible, be still and still the night. We are centuries of grace, the internal uprising, the creation of race. The spiritual warfare is the one you can win. An army of angels begin where we end. We beautiful broken, warrior ready in soulhood, the wish and the wish you would. The daughter of drums spangled banners. We are the tearing down, a falling together. Our cosmos, our scars, a subtle piece. Ain't it a miracle to simply feel safe? Asada, Muhammad, Jesus, Harriet, Fanny, Martin, Sojourner, Malcolm.
they both uh, really are poetry. <laughs> poetry on top of rhythm, poetry on top of music. I mean, if you listen to Bob Dylan, like when I listen to Bob Dylan, there's certain, uh, you know, words and songs he does where, where I hear a hip hop beat under and I'm like, yo, this guy's rhyming, he's rapping, you know? <laughs> You know, there's a lot of like small things that, that intersect and cross, but it creates like what the big picture is that they're very, very closely related mm -hmm. and knit and come out of the same thing. And, and it's music for the people. Mm -hmm. So yeah. We wanted to take performance and community work and blend them together. Um, so in 2018, we decided to create a community outreach performance project, um, which would create this ripple effect even greater than our performances to connect with people outside of, say, a bar venue or a coffee house um, and really going into places like community centers, yoga studios, libraries, schools, um, in addition to festivals. So we created this organization called Higher Grounds Music. Higher Grounds Music is a community-centered organization that uses motivational classical hip-hop to foster community growth. Working in a strength-based model, projects, programs, and services are offered in various settings, which include schools, after-school programs, community centers, creative spaces, treatment programs, and wellness centers. Each experience is designed to create a supportive environment to promote self-expression, nurture group cohesion, and enrich social emotional growth. We are motivated to make music accessible to all and focus on community outreach in areas in which the arts are limited. So one of the really key factors of making this project happen was the different roles and experience that we both have. Um, I went to school to be a music therapist and have this passion about music therapy. Um, and I've been a performer uh, for a number of years, uh, just doing the, the live performance. I went to school for video production, mm -hmm. so I, I brought that into the project. Mm -hmm. um, and along with performing, I did a lot of event planning mm -hmm. and, and fundraising. Uh, so, so that part I was able to bring to the project. Mm -hmm. And um, this community outreach project has a therapeutic lens, however, um, it's community work more than therapy. But we modeled it off of this theoretical background called community music therapy. Um, and what they aim to do is kind of dismantle this hierarchy between everybody that's in the community and really brings it back to each person who's there, regardless if you're performing, if you're selling tickets, <laughs> if you're collecting food, whatever your role is, you are just as important as the other person it's in the space. Evil, yeah. Koof, you bring a lot of the experience of like event planning mm -hmm. and networking with people in the community already. For sure. Um, talking to different, you know, booking people, just mm -hmm. people who advocate. Um, and a lot of my role before this project was um, doing music therapy groups. 
that we all had this therapeutic process, um, a little bit more intensive internal work. Um, and so I was doing a lot of processing all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool how collectively coming together, it's transitioning into like a blend of roles mm -hmm. um, where we're able to adapt on both sides, mm -hmm. kind of going into some process and having that immediate result from, say, creating a group song together. Right, right. Um, to setting up fundraisers to be able to uh, provide for community um, events to happen and for sure. then fund, say, for example, housing associations or something. So we wanted to figure out a way how to structure our program um, and be able to really hit different levels of the community. Um, from both of our backgrounds, we kind of work on a continuum where um, on one side, the performance-based work is providing funds for a different organization to do something. So the work is more indirect, like Hoof was talking about. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of the continuum is therapeutic intervention of music therapy work. That would be more internal in inpatient programs, um, in what you would imagine to be counseling settings. Um, and therefore, we had to find how do we adjust and create different workshops for the different needs um, that we are requested and making connections with. We decided to use an ecological model. Um, and ecological models really focus on the needs of the community. And that's what all of this is about, right? Um, it breaks it down into different levels. So the individual is really a humanistic approach. Um, what the individual needs, right? Based on their culture, their environment, what's going on in society, um, rather than kind of what anybody else perceives. Right. Then moving into the micro system. And that's still including that one-to-one -one human individual, but now we're moving into family and uh, maybe church, um, maybe yoga class, right? So these are things that are group work, um, very close to individuals, a small knit group um, where you could still do some um, processing and expression and creating kind of on this tight knit woven circle. Then we move into the exosystem which is really about creating that project or that performance together, but having an audience or having the greater community be aware or advocating that this is happening, right? So a performance might be in the middle of a city center square advocating for a specific, um, group or program mm -hmm. and really by watching that, by the community watching that, there's some kind of shift. Um, also within that exosystem is mass media. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that Goof, you introduced me to. Yeah, and that's like radio interviews, podcasts, um, just any way outside of performing to get the word out and get it heard and spread. Uh, nowadays, social media mm -hmm. is a big one. So yeah, just finding these, uh, these different forms uh, to get the word out. Mm -hmm. And then the last is the macro system, which really is government, laws, um, education. Uh, being an adjunct professor at Temple and Immaculata in Pennsylvania. Um, we've been able to do some uh, professional development through music therapy and being able to, what's pretty cool is make this shift um, with professionals that are doing this work also. 
because even in my studies of learning about it, it's a very westernized, individualized approach. However, this whole philosophy, folk music, hip hop, um, you know, what we have learned from Greek literature, that's all about community yeah. and really moving into a communal perspective. Um, so also kind of teaching colleagues about how do we, you know, break out of the shell of this individual therapy process and bring it into the greater community. Mm -hmm. Now that we've uh, talked about the work that we do, um, we'd like to show you uh, some footage of some of the stuff we've done over the uh, past few years. This first clip here is a program we did. It was an after-school program collaboration. Um, and it's called Play on Philly. And we were able to work with these students for about four to six weeks. Um, it was pretty cool. They took our songs and made orchestration um, arrangements together with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was beautiful. And then uh, we recorded the song. And the final, the, the, the hoorah, was doing a live performance together. At a, uh, at a beautiful venue in Philadelphia. Yes. This footage here, this was actually in Anchorage, Alaska at uh, Seeds to Change. And we did a afternoon we spent learning about their program so everybody there could tell us about um, their work and also then we did a performance that had some creative art in creative arts interventions. This here is the Philadelphia Museum of Art, uh, an after-school program we did. And this was also a residency that lasted a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. um, really connecting those layers, which was cool. Um, we worked also with a artist and she presented the piece of art. Um, Hoof helped with spoken word. Yep. Um, then I provided a harp accompaniment. And we did the spoken word in front of the art um, in the art museum. Yes, they all um, read their, their piece of poetry. Uh, wow, while wow. Christine played the harp, <laughs> it was beautiful. It was, it was an amazing experience and in the prestigious Museum of Art of Philadelphia. It was, it was a beautiful thing. Yeah, and um, the next step is for their work to be part of the exhibit so people could come right up to the artwork, put the headphones on, watch the piece of art mm -hmm. while listening to this spoken word um, that the students created, which is cool. This here is also uh, school related. Uh, Christine and I went into a Montessori school and worked with the students on songwriting and ex explaining the process of songwriting and actually putting a song together. The, the group I took, uh, we worked on creating the music and then Christine took, you know, the other half. And yeah, and we worked on the lyrics and the words. Um, so once those words were created, um, Koof made a production which, yes. was, which matched the essence of the words, <laughs> which is really cool. We hopped in the car, but the school's not far. We got our masks and began our first class. This next one was, uh, we did a West Coast tour and did some yoga studios out there. This is one, one of the yoga studios we went into. And at, at the yoga studios, what we do is collaborate with a local yoga teacher where they still facilitate the class. Um, and we incorporate uh, spoken word and improvised harp to the class. And this final footage is footage from festivals mm -hmm. that we've played at and they're all like you know health conscious wellness festivals um, and we've we've played quite a few of those mm -hmm.
just staring out the window Days move fast but I'm taking it in slow You know the seas just remain calm Surrounding me is the storm but it don't last long I know the piercing sun soon to brighten any grim Look a feeling it might have been, yeah It's all love inside of the temple When you enter, look up, keep a positive mental We breathe thoughts and ideas so nice United, not dividing, so we grow job tight, yeah. I reminisce of all the beauty I've known. As a young and mama showed me different ways to go. In my left ear, yep, and right out the other. But some years later, I've rediscovered, uncovered those precious gems. Thank you, mom, you knew it sink in. It just took some time. And now we move steady with this heart of gold. And I'm paying with our gain so the youth can grow. Spiritually, say la vie Through these sounds and words We found our grounds of peace Firmly planted, outstanding Joy to say the least Now the comet's landing Illuminating space sharing rays of light We travel so far with the pure divine It comes unscheduled but always on time Time, time, and that's real
the stereo. My brother in the bass be getting high than a kite be. And I was trying to figure ways to get up on that bright screen. Big dreams, big lights. Money, fame, much hype. I saw myself shining brighter than the sunlight. Nan singing gospel, mom praying every night. Dad was in the bar and my pen was bleeding just right. Ink upon the pages, my future being scripted. A diary of everything I seen and how it built me. Stronger I was made from the things that ain't killed me. I put it in the art and that outcome was filthy. But honest as I ever been. See, music is the medicine. I'm feeling tired but inspired as the world spin. Now I don't know the future. I just know where I've been. So now I'm jumping off the cliff hoping love takes me in. Hoping love. So thank you for being here and listening to our, um, our workshop and what we have found and what we've created. Um, and we've done a lot of talking, so <laughs> <laughs> we want to be able to really connect with you all um, and continue this conversation. So we wanted to propose some questions um, and for this last few minutes we'll be in the chat to start some discussion if you feel like answering them. Um, the first question. So who are you influenced by and what are you listening to? And what are the roots of this music? So who were they influenced by? That's something we learned through this project that <laughs> it goes, you know, the circle continues. Yeah, for sure, wider circles.
also uh, does the music you create uh, is it, is there a fusion of of genres? Mm. Is is there you know a crossroad of genres? Uh, yeah. And the last one, really when we discuss that influence and just in general talking about the music that we bring to our communities, how does that lead to unity within our communities? Well, thank you for joining us on this journey. Yes. Um, we've enjoyed learning ourselves and spreading this knowledge. Um, special thanks to Anchorage Folk Festival for having us um, and creating these wonderful workshops for the community. Yes, and if you're interested in keeping in touch with us, uh, you could go to our website kufnots.com, K-U-F-K-N-O-T-Z.com, and that's really the hub. It'll take you to our workshops, to our music, to where we're performing. And please stay in touch. Um, we are always looking for ways to connect, so reach out. Yes, and we look forward to actually coming to Alaska yeah. and, and, you know, being with the community and performing and collaborating. Yeah. So yeah, please do keep in touch. We'll see you soon. Peace. Cool. So this tune is Higher. It's a remake of a, uh, a Jackie Wilson song. Love's a beautiful thing. Sometimes it creeps into our lives when we're least expecting it and not looking. When that happens, it's a wonderful thing. Love. Yeah.
Sophisticated and fine Little devilish smile Let me know you was wild It's all peace I see a little me and you In time we could find that that feeling's true Not every day I come across someone like you So now I thank y'all for the blessing set Vibrant as sunshine with an oil set Had me bugged out Thinking of the future so quick Just one glimpse you had me open miss Before your presence I was emotionless now I'm lost in the waves of your ocean mist All good, there's no more loneliness Just days of love that'll end in bliss And a lifetime together that'll start with a kiss Yeah.